So I think uh, it's, you know, I may sound cliche when I say this, but this is what I was taught my entire life, that one, you don't get something for nothing. Mm -hmm. Two, if it's too good to be true, then it's not. And three, and this is the part that's very hard, don't ever want to believe something more than you want the truth. Ooh. Because if you want to believe something, you will discard everything to get to your to see your belief confirmed. None so oh, blind. Blind. You left out a fourth one. What's that? Don't be a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> that's my rule. That's right. All right. So, those so, were my parents' rules. I mean, that's, my, <laughs> none so blind as those who refuse to see is kind of like another right. mm -hmm. way of rephrasing that. And talking of phraseology, I think we just us three here have learned recently some scamming language. Firstly, if I know you could, I'll ask you to break them down. One is honeypot. The mm. other is mm, pig butchering. So which one? Well, one sounds pretty good. Yeah. And, um, and it ain't the honeypot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> could, so Bogdan, could you break down each, each phrase for us so as we understand and gives yes. our audience an understanding as well? I like the way you have split them into adversary language and good guys language. Uh, I'll start with pig butchering. This is a type of scam that has been going on for quite a while. It's very popular in Southeast Asia. That's where it got its name from because it technically means fattening up the pig before you sacrifice it. And wow. uh, uh, that's what cyber criminals are doing to the victims. They gain their trust. They keep conversations going on for uh, weeks, maybe months, trying to gain their wow. trust and get as close to them as possible. And when they earn their trust, they're going to create massive financial losses because they already have that person's trust. Uh, a very common uh, pig butchering uh, type of attack is somebody texting you normally with an, op uh, with an opposite sex handle. Like uh, if you're a, a man, they will impersonate a woman and they will be uh, asking you, hey, this is Jennifer. Uh, how far away are you from the airport? Because I'm, uh, I'm kind of losing patience here. You were supposed to pick me up at 10. And you look at the phone and answer, hey, you have the wrong number. Probably you want to sort it out with your taxi cab, Uber driver, whatever. They will uh, reply, hey, thank you for uh, being so kind. Uh, by the way, I'm visiting the city. I want to see uh, what what your city offers. Uh, do you have any recommendations? And they kick off a conversation. And they will entertain that conversation with, uh, with the victim for months. They will exchange photos that are created uh, with uh, deep fake technology. They will create videos. They will gain your trust up until some point where they start uh, working at the con. Hey, look, I'm, uh, I'm doing just fine. Uh, I have invested in cryptocurrency a while ago, and now I'm reaping the rewards. We've been meeting online for uh, quite a while. So I'll tell you my secret. Uh, let me teach you how to invest a little bit of money to multiply it 10 times, 12, 20 times, and so on. And they will start working on this uh, financial fraud when you have fi finally fallen in love with them. Um, I've been talking to people uh, who have lost significant amounts of money. Wait, wait, they have yet to meet these yeah. people. Yeah. They're falling in love via electrons. Yes. And you know, emotion <laughs> is emotion, uh, regardless of the vector. So uh, <laughs> reminds me of that joke. Why is love uh, on the wireless spectrum? Because it's measured in Hertz. Oh, Yay. oh, oh. Uh, look at that. Mm. <laughs> Good one. Good uh, one. I'll be here all week. Uh, okay. <laughs> so people fall in love and they're looking forward to meeting the other one, but it's, mm, it's never a good opportunity for that uh, because of travel, because of all these things. And eventually people end up losing a lot of money. Uh, we've been investigating a couple of these scams. And the sad thing was that People who had lost like hundreds of thousands of dollars were Damn, like, you know wow. what? I don't care about the money. I don't have anybody to wake up to and text. Mm. Whoa. That is, that's, uh, that's sad. The psychological damage is some, sometimes much more impactful for them whoa. than the financial damage. Wow. Wow. So mm. 
All right. Wait, wait. So this sets up the plot for the movie Her, where just let the AI be your companion. Fall in love with AI, and the AI is not going to try to take your money. Take your money. Yeah. Yeah. ChatGPT. I don't think it wants to take your money, but it'll totally make you think you're in love with it if you ask it the right questions. That's true. So we have so we have solutions for this. I I I have a very limited uh, uh, movie culture. But my assumption is that that movie didn't end well. (laughs) (laughs) Well, You may be right. So we've done pig butchering. Can you just open up the the honeypot for us? Let us see inside. The honeypot. We have a couple of technologies that we call honeypot. It's something that researchers uh, normally do. That's a computer or a connected system that poses like it's a victim. A honeypot is used by uh, uh, cybersecurity researchers to attract cyber criminals. And they will attempt to hack into that machine thinking that uh, it's a real user on the internet. It's somebody's computer. And they will attempt to exercise the prowess to hack into that. And the machine, instead of uh, just letting it through, it records every step of the attack for us to be able to decompose the way cyber criminals got in. Uh, that brings a lot of value for us because it helps us understand how the criminals are operating on the internet, what tactics and tools they're using, how they're approaching this puzzle of hacking into uh, somebody's computer, and what are the telltale signs that we can use in an early stage of the attack to block them. Uh, We use honeypots for various things, for collecting uh, virus samples, for instance. We use honeypots for IoT devices to see how cyber criminals are harvesting IoT devices and uh, building large uh, armies of zombie devices that they're using then to attack civilian targets. Uh, We are using honeypots for recording uh, scam conversations and extracting uh, red flags in that conversation that will help the victim identify when they're being scammed. So that's very short definition of the honeypot. So honeypot is the good guy's tools. Yes, uh, a honeypot is normally uh, somebody's uh, way of staying up to date with the latest tactics in uh, the hacking world. Okay, so I'm glad that exists. Mm. 